In this lesson, we want to review simplifying powers of i. So over the course of the last two lessons, we talked about the imaginary unit i, and we talked about complex numbers in general and how to perform operations with complex numbers. So one more topic that comes up when you first start looking at imaginary units, you're going to think about how to simplify powers of i. So if you got something like i raised to the power of 503, you are expected to write that in a simpler form, okay? So it's very easy to kind of perform this simplification. You just need to know your rules of exponents and you need to know the first four, so i to the first power, i squared, i cubed, and i to the fourth power, so the first four powers of i, okay? With those two things, the rules of exponents and the first four powers of i, you can simplify any power of i that you'd want to. All right. So the first thing I have listed here is i to the power of zero is equal to one. I just put this here for reference sake. We're not gonna use it in the lesson. A lot of students will ask, is i to the power of zero equal to one? The answer to that is yes. So any non-zero number raised to the power of zero is always one, okay? When we think about the definition of i, we normally get i squared is equal to negative one given to us. So this guy right here, and we know that i to the first power is just equal to i, right? Any number raised to the power of one is just itself. So that's where those two come from. Now, when I get to i cubed, I start using my rules for exponents. So I break this up and I say it's equal to i squared times i, okay? You can say this is i to the first power here if you want to. By rules of exponents, if I multiply here, i stays the same and I add two plus one to get me back to three, okay? So I haven't done anything illegal. Then I take the fact that i squared by definition is negative one and I just replace it. So now I have negative one times i, which is just negative i, okay? So right now we know that i to the first power is just i, i squared is negative one, and i cubed is negative i. Now, what about i to the fourth power? We're gonna break this up as i squared times i squared. Again, rules of exponents, i would stay the same. Two plus two is four, so nothing illegal there. And again, we know that i squared by definition is negative one. So we're just replacing it in each case. Negative one times negative one is positive one, okay? So we need to write this down in your notebook or whatever you're using to follow along. i to the first power is i, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth power is one. So we just need to know those four, okay? That's all we need. So let's look at our first example. So suppose we see i to the power of 48. So the first thing you're gonna look for, if you're dealing with whole number exponents, okay? Whole number exponents. So if you have something like 48, which is a whole number, the first thing you wanna do is check for divisibility by four. If it's divisible by four, it's equal to one, okay? So 48 is divisible by four. 48 divided by four is 12. So I can rewrite this using the power to power rule as i to the fourth power raised to the 12th power, okay? If I know that i to the fourth power by definition is one, then I could say this is one to the 12th power, which is one. So if you have i raised to a whole number exponent that is divisible by four, it simplifies to just one. So if I had something like i to the power of 60, as an example, we all know that 60 divided by four is 15. So I could write this as i to the fourth power raised to the 15th power. Again, this is just one to the 15th power, which is one. One raised to any power is always one. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you're raising it to. Once you have this i to the fourth power here being raised to something, it's just one raised to whatever, which is always gonna give you one, okay? If you had something like i raised to the power of 200, as an example, we know that 200 divided by four is 50. So again, I could just say that this is i to the fourth power raised to the 50th power. This is one raised to the 50th power, which is just one, okay? So if you have i raised to a whole number exponent, and that whole number happens to be divisible by four, it's just equal to one, okay? You don't need to do all this. You can just stop and say it's one. Now, what if it's not divisible by four? What do we do? So suppose we saw i raised to the power of 61. Well, what you wanna do is you wanna look for the next number going down that's going to be divisible by four, okay? So in this case, we know that if you're at 61, if I go down to 60, 60 divided by four, 60 divided by four is 15. So I'm just gonna break this up and say this is i to the power of 60. Let me make that a little better. So again, i to the power of 60 times i to the first power. Now, we know i to the power of 60 is what? It's one, right? I could write it as i to the power of four raised to the power of 15, this is one. 
So I can replace this right here with a one. That's gone, don't even think about it anymore. So it's one times i to the first power, which is just i, okay? Very, very easy process. All right, what about i to the power of 202? Again, is it divisible by four? No, it's not, right? A number of four to be divisible by four, the final two digits, in this case, that would be two, because there's a zero in front of the two, has to form a number that's divisible by four. Two is not divisible by four, right? If I divide two by four, I get 0.5. So what I have to do is, again, look for a number going down that's divisible by four. 201 wouldn't be, but 200 is. So I can break this up and say this is one. It's i to the power of 200 times i squared. Okay, we know that this guy is gonna be a one, right? So we'll say one times i squared. And we know that i squared by definition is negative one. All right, what about i raised to the power of 1003, okay? We know that, again, I look at the final two digits of the number, it's a three, it's not divisible by four. If that was a four, it would be, but we're not that high up. So we need to go down to two, which isn't, and then to one, which isn't, and then to zero, which is. So the number 1000 is divisible by four. So I could write this as i raised to the power of 1000, times i raised to the power of three. We know this is one, okay? So one times i cubed. Again, we know by definition i cubed is negative i. Okay, so this is negative i. All right, what about i raised to the power of negative 22? Don't get scared if you see a negative exponent. Remember, if you get a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal of the base, okay, so it would be one over i, and you make the exponent positive. So it's to the 22nd power. So again, I'm just using my same process here. So I have one over, when I think about i to the power of 22, is 22 divisible by four? No. Is 21? No. Is 20? Yes. So I could write this as one over i raised to the power of 20 times i raised to the power of two. Okay, so one over, I know i raised to the power of 20 is one times i squared is negative one. So times negative one. So you basically have one over, one times negative one is just negative one, so one over negative one, which is negative one. All right, so let's wrap up the lesson by looking at an example where we need to rationalize the denominator. So we have i raised to the power of negative 119, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my rule for, again, negative exponents. So I'm gonna say I have one over i raised to the power of 119. Now just ask yourself the question, is 119 divisible by four, right? Just look at the last two digits. So is 19 divisible by four? No. 18, no. 17, no. 16, yes. So if you did that on a calculator, if you did 116 divided by four, you would get 29, okay? So if you broke this up the long way, you could say this is one over, you could do i raised to the power of 116. Again, 116 there is going to be divisible by four. And then times you have i cubed. So at this point, you could further break this up or you could just realize that this right here is one. Either way, it doesn't matter. Let's just go through it the long way one last time. So I'm gonna go one over. I'll go ahead and say this is i raised to the power of four. And then this is raised to the power of 29. Again, four times 29 is just 116, okay? So this right here is gonna end up giving me one. And then I'll say times i cubed, okay? So I know i cubed by definition is negative i. So I can just say this is one over negative i. Now here's where you run into trouble. Okay, and sometimes I forget this myself. You wanna make sure that when you have i in the denominator, you take the step to rationalize the denominator because technically i is going to be the square root of negative one, right? We don't want radicals in a simplified denominator, okay? So what I wanna do here, just take the extra step and multiply this by i over i. Remember, you can do this because i over i technically is one. Multiplying something by one does not change the value. So this is going to give me what? It's going to give me i over, you could say you have negative, let's just treat this as negative one times i times i is i squared, okay? So what is this now? It's i over, we'll say negative one times i squared by definition is negative one. Well, negative one times negative one is one and i over one would just be i, okay? So after we rationalize the denominator, our simplified result here is just going to be i. 